the last week I've had a couple of meetings where it's been intense. You know, lots of people and uh, important. And without even thinking about it, I've I felt this urge to like lean into stillness. <laughs> Not only the stillness here, but like the stillness there, the stillness where other people were. And even just like the stillness of the computer screen, I don't know. It just had an urge to. And I don't know if it's my imagination, but it seems to uh, uh, turn things for the better. Yeah. Have you ever had that urge? Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I know, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah, the, the, the stillness, the stillness is already here. You know, it's already here. It's already here and everywhere. So it's The attention may seem to arise from stillness and be somewhere, which is nowhere, because <laughs> it's just this. Uh, and, and it may seem as if there are people there somewhere, but that's just a, uh, an imagination. That's just an attention that moves out and seems to be there. But what you are is stillness, you never move. There is no stillness in you. There's just stillness everywhere. Even in the midst of people being busy, running around, going around, uh, shouting, uh, doing all sorts of things, there's just stillness already. Even before words, even before any thinking may arise, even before any searching may arise, stillness is already there. So in a way, everything is quiet already. Everything is is stillness already. Because stillness is what you are. Stillness is, is already, uh, I should say, in your heart. When the attention is brought back to the heart, then it is seen that stillness doesn't go away. It's always here. It is the attention that moves out. We seem to go around, busy with the activity, with thoughts. And thoughts uh, are just arising from this stillness. And they don't belong to anyone. Thoughts don't belong to anyone. They are just arising from stillness and they appear in from stillness and come back to stillness. So everything that seems to arise from stillness is still stillness arising. So everything, I should say, everything is stillness, is quiet. Peaceful, very light, so everything is nothing, is nothing special.
So stillness is already what you are. Is already there. Doesn't go away. And it doesn't have anything to say about what's happening or what is seen. Because it sees nothing but itself. And stillness is just another word. This is already here. Before all words may arise, this is already here. It doesn't go away, it never moves. It's everywhere present, there's nothing. And we call it stillness, undisturbed silence, spaciousness. But those are just words. This is wordless. Even what seems to be space is watched in, in this, from this. You know, At times I may say, okay, go ahead. <laughs> <clears throat> There's consciousness, and then there's creativity. That we, we think we own as people, right? We see other people's conscious and created see ourselves as conscious and creative. And we see other things as not conscious and creative, but maybe a little bit. But what they've started to, to see is that um, uh, even like little bugs and cells and uh, uh, are creative at problem solving. Like people are creative at problem solving, you know. Where do you think, where do you think consciousness and creativity exist? From whence do they come? <laughs> Uh, I should say, uh, what seems to be consciousness is just this appearing as consciousness. So, because there's nothing outside of this. There's nothing outside of what is. So, what is may appear as everything, may appear as a, as a beetle, may appear as a donkey, may appear as a tree, may appear as a wall may appear as everything. So you can call it consciousness. You know, those are just words, but it's still this. Right. What is appearing. It's this. I think that consciousness is an inherent part of this. It is outside our own perception. But consciousness and awareness is everywhere. And I think that creativity is everywhere. Yes. That we're not yes. creative. We just open ourselves up to this, which is inherently conscious and creative. That springs from the silence. Yes. Spontaneously. There's, everywhere. There's, there's, yes, there's one mind. There are no minds. There's just one mind that seems to appear as different minds. There's just one mind. The creativity that is there 
or the consciousness that is there, that seems to be there in an end, is the same consciousness that is there. Mm. It appears in its uh, own unique way uh, from different uh, expression or from different uh, what seems to be objects from different bodies. You know, in 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 a monkey, it may appear. Uh, because the monkey has abilities to jump around trees, you know, to, to, you know. So it appears in a unique way in that body. Then in that body, it may appear in its own unique way. So it's just one mind appearing to be different minds, but still the same mind, the same consciousness. But it may be even the same consciousness that exists in a, a rock. That we don't see. Consciousness may be everywhere. The consciousness may pervade the universe as gases and the sun. You know. Yeah. The stone. Oh. The tree that has been striked by lightning, the planets, <laughs> everything is, is full of life. Everything has life, is alive. The, the stone is alive because this, this boundless aliveness is everywhere, expressing in what seems to be a stone, appearing as there. So everything seems to be alive in you. Because everything is this. This is aliveness. This is uh, everywhere present. This is aliveness. This is love. This is consciousness. This is creativity. This is hate. This is conflict. This is everything. Even words. Anything may, may be spoken here. I may say anything, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't necessarily mean that if I say something different from what is, I'm saying right now, it doesn't mean that no, somebody else is speaking. No, it's still the same. This, this or consciousness, or what is spaciousness, saying anything. So there's nobody to be responsible for anything. If somebody says you are responsible for your words, that's just this too. <laughs> yeah. If somebody says I hate God, that's God too. If somebody says I love God, that's God appearing as that. If somebody says God is a big white man God is here. and a penis up in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> and who hates everybody who's not Christian. That yeah. too is God. <laughs> yeah, it's just God playing his own game. And somebody is praying, that's God praying. Somebody's complaining, that's God complaining. Somebody gives an instruction, you should always trust God, believe in God, that's God too. <laughs> or somebody says, I'm the devil, I gave my love to the devil. Uh, should hate God, disown God. That's God too. There's no separation. <laughs> it's a play. 
God is playing. God is playing as you. As Charles, who has a beautiful family, beautiful children, beautiful wife. It's God, everything is God. Everything is this. If somebody says, Oh, why is he using this name, God? Oh, I'm starting not to like him now. <laughs> that's that's God too. And that's this too, appearing as that. There isn't any separation here. <laughs> you know, when they um when when people used to fight wars, they would just line up in their uniforms. And like, you know, they'd have like the men in red uniforms and the men in blue uniforms, and they would march to each other at each other with guns and then kill each other. <laughs> God, God. <laughs> yeah. Nothing happens. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's still the same one. Same this. Can call it whatever. Can say it's you, me, them. It doesn't really matter. It's just this. Words don't matter to this. Words can't change this. Words can't destroy this. Because everything is this. Are you still there? There you are. You just said words can't destroy this because everything is this. And then you froze. <laughs> and you also froze and no. you uh, uh, you, oh, you I were froze closing for you? your eyes ah. yes it's like you were praying <laughs> your eyes were closed <laughs> So God, this, doesn't know you, doesn't recognize you as real. Because there's only this. What seems to be a you? Is this too? So it doesn't know in that sense. It knows itself. There's everything. Do you know what fractals are? Fractals. Yeah. No. So in the 1970s, they started to do experiments with um with numbers and imaginary numbers. Do you know what imaginary numbers are? <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Um 
and they started getting these kind of repeating patterns out of mathematical equations. If they they put a certain mathematical equation, they let it iterate on itself, you know. So if you think about like one plus one is two, two plus one is three, three plus one is four, you know. But if you do a comp more complicated thing and let it iterate on itself, it makes a pattern. Right, and a simple pattern would be like a line that might go up. But they started to do these patterns with imaginary numbers, which one would think are imaginary, right? <laughs> imaginary numbers don't even make sense. Um, but what they found is they got these patterns that exist in nature. You know? Mm -hmm. Um, and so a, a simple one would be like the inside of a seashell that goes in, you know, gets smaller and smaller and it's in a, in a specific pattern and then goes, fans out to get larger, you know, because every single iteration of a season, it does a little additional thing and then grows on itself and goes out. But even like the patterns of ferns and the patterns of snowflakes and the patterns of so many natural phenomena are captured yes. by these mathematical equations that are just based on imaginary numbers that they didn't try to get to match the thing you know they were just playing with math the patterns came out and those patterns match things in our environment you know wow hmm. i heard about that when i was a uh, uh in in high school, it was very, it was, there was a book about it when I was in high school. A lot of people had talked about it. And it made me, uh, when I went to college, I studied math for a while because I was uh, convinced that God was math. <laughs> <laughs> that there was a pattern in everything and that pattern was God, you know, but it was the pattern itself that was God. Yeah. And yeah, it just seems like it's an infinitely complex series of equations set into motion at different scales, self-evolving, that creates all these patterns, you know. I can't believe you ignored frac fractals. Let me see. I don't have a... I'll send you I'll send you some fractals after the call so you can look at them. It's beautiful. Yeah, I'll have a look at them. Yeah. I mean, you know like what a fern looks like, right? Or just it's yeah. continually, yeah. Each branch of the leaf follows a, you know, a certain logic that can be captured by iterative math, you know. Yeah. It's, I'm not explaining it very so well. It may, seem, it may seem as if everything is, is calculated in a way. And it's not necessarily even calculated. It's like branching out from the logic of, of calculations. You know what I mean? <laughs> calculated is like somebody... <laughs> Like, you know, sitting down and <laughs> deciding what their grocery yeah. bill should be, you know. <laughs> but it's just like infinite spitting out of calculations. Yeah. yeah. There's a documentary about, a. have probably already told you about this. The guy, there's a guy who was, lived about 100 years ago in India who was dreaming math. Did I tell you that story? No. It was, a, it was, he was poor in India. And he was obsessed with, you know, a certain Indian goddess. And he would pray to her fervently, you know. And he was a mathematician, a young, a young guy who was interested in math. And um, and just these equations started to come to him 
in his dreams and in his prayers, like fully formed equations in the language of math, not just ideas, but in the language of math. And he would just write them down and fill books with them. And, you know, this was a hundred years ago in India. Um, so he get he like sent he sent the he applied to a college he applied to Cambridge, a very famous British university, um, and they didn't even really believe it because of the math was so good it was so beyond anything that they had, you know, it was a step change in terms of the the the, um, the ability of math at the time. So they finally like you know got the kid over and let him in. And, you know, of course, there's all sorts of racism because he's an Indian guy in the UK and there's jealous professors and this and that. But he was just writing this book after book of amazing things that were are, are used today in all of our technolo technology and equipment. And he just, you know, kept on saying that it came from the goddess. And then he died. <laughs> <laughs> he died at like 40. Um, yeah. yeah. But by his own admission, um, these things were just pouring through him, you know. Mm. It's just amazing. There's a documentary about it. Yeah. To me, Maybe it, everything was being channeled. Yeah. Through. Mm -hmm. the mystery of creativity you know i mean obviously he had to have a certain kind of mind but mm -hmm. i mean i'm a kind of a creative person in my very very strange small field you know but it's like i'm a complicated piece of glass <laughs> <laughs> that's been cut by my life, you know, and the light shines through it and what comes out the other edge end is the creativity, you know. So yeah. it's all part of this one and, and we're all, all of us, you know, our unique refractor the light. And that light includes the creativity, I think, and the consciousness. Yeah. That's that's the one creativity and consciousness. Yeah. And it's everywhere present. It's everywhere. Even in the small microscopic creature crawling around, there is so much creativity there that you cannot even see. <laughs> yeah. I remember, I don't know if it was uh, you who told me or somebody else, but there is a guy who uh, who used to create, uh, he used to take a little uh, match, matchstick and create, design very, and design an elephant there. With a man riding on on its design, he would design a car. Just create, just design a car there. You know, sculpture a car. You mean he would carve them? Carve, yes, that's the way. <laughs> that's the yeah. way I'm looking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think you you told me. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Me. I know it doesn't sound familiar. <laughs> it does. Must have been Michael. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. 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 So there's there's a lot of cre creativity there, even even in the things that we cannot even see with our the eyes. So yeah. Because yeah. this is everywhere. This uh, boundless energy is everywhere. Expressing in different forms everywhere, in different ways. 
It's like when Obi-Wan told Luke to shut his eyes when he was learning the Force. No, <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's more force when you're not looking exactly even even like this or what seems to be happening like human beings people going around that this creativity that is just this expressing its creativity you know to and 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 and, and it, it dreams itself as somebody witnessing people going around animals moving around an activity happening. And then when it recognizes that it has never been an individual, it is seen that so oh, <laughs> it was just this. It was just myself as everything. So it doesn't really mind. It may seem to mind in a dream. It may seem to mind some things. Oh, I don't like that one. I don't like that way. I don't like this house. You know. But when it's it sees itself that it has never been in a, it has never been a dreamer. It has never been in any dream. It was just itself. So it, it doesn't really mind, you know, what's happening. Because it sees nothing but itself. It doesn't see the other, it doesn't see things. It knows itself as nothing. Or you can say it unknowing, it doesn't really matter. And the body is just the body. It, it, it doesn't even know it's you. <laughs> I guess that's true. <laughs> In fact, a lot of my body isn't me by any definition. A lot of a lot of your body is just full of bacteria. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and other autonomous yeah. things. Yeah. So the body is nothing. There's nothing special. It's just a body. If it's if it's somehow gets obliterated, it won't change this. It won't change what you are, what you really are. What you really are remain as it is. It doesn't depend on the body. Whether the body drops or not, doesn't matter. Whether the body is sick or not, cannot touch this. The anger cannot touch this. Frustration cannot touch this. Because it's still this appearing as anger, appearing as frustration. <laughs> Everything is this already. So this is indestructible. This is formless. This is empty. 
weightless, shameless, desireless. It's not a human being. It's already here. It's already here. Even before any uh, <clears throat> any decision may arise to seek for it, before any thought may arise, before any problem may arise, before anything may arise, it's already here. It doesn't go anywhere. Even the space, what seems to be the space, is being watched from this. It's subtler than space, even. It's aliveness. There is no effort here. There is no effort. It's effortless and obvious. Not even a little bit. When a little effort is being made, then in a way that becomes a story of some sort. <laughs> that's appearing in it in some oh let me before you can even say those words before you can even think that it's already it's already here <laughs> there is no effort to get to it and there's no getting to it because there's only it So that's why uh, at times I would say uh, <laughs> what seems to be uh, the separate self is always late. It's always late. It's always late. You know, they've done studies at a microscopic level, not microscopic, uh, micro temporal level, where they, they see, they, they find that people act and then they perceive that they act just a little bit, just a little bit ahead of time <laughs> or a little bit behind, right? If, if if you um if you told me you hated me and I said you bastard <laughs> I would say you bastard a millisecond before I realized I had said you bastard you perceive things <laughs> so we're actually just spinning out our lives thinking that we're responsible for them and we're actually perceiving them already too late. Yeah. <laughs> it's already too late. We act yes. and then justify and make a story around how we acted. Yeah. As if it was us acting. As if it was us. Yeah. Yeah. As I was saying, uh, even your words, you're not responsible for your words because there isn't say you there. The words are just spoken. Every question, every, you know, there's just talking, but nobody's doing it. It's just happening. 
it's just arising. It springs forth from this and comes back to this, disappears in this. You know, anything may arise in this, it doesn't matter. This as it is, it, it, it doesn't mind. This is the way it is, you know, even before any talking about it may appear, even even before any discussion about it may appear, it's just the way it is. So the dis the discussion or somebody saying having different opinions, it, it doesn't really touch this. This is just this, just this. It's it's already here. Nothing it doesn't move. It doesn't mind. It doesn't get angry. It doesn't charge. It, it, it doesn't wish that somebody could talk uh, in a very polite way or somebody may be angry. It, it doesn't wish anything. It, it doesn't mind. It's just everything is just happening. It's just arising from it, appearing from it and disappearing in it. So there are no rules and regulations. Yeah. Anything may happen. And does. The body may, may, may be tired, but this is just <laughs> the way it is. It's just the way it's here. It's not tired. I remember even in the Bible when Jesus said, uh, I don't know who said it really, but there is a way that says uh, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So the spirit is, is 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 not tired. It's just, but the body may seem to be weak. But that is being weakness from nothing. So nothing gets doesn't get tired. Is that from the Bible? <laughs> I think that's a spirit. Hmm. Does it mean you're right? Matthew twenty six forty one. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. That's a warning. Nkosi. <laughs> <laughs> you can't help yourself because your flesh is too weak. <laughs> yeah. Don't be tempted. Don't eat that chocolate sundae. <laughs> 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 yeah, the, the the character in a way the body here is allowed to do what it's destined to do. But I remain as I am, which is nothing. This, is, this doesn't suppress anything because it doesn't mind. It knows itself that it's nothing. When you know yourself as nothing, nothing can touch you. Then you... <laughs> yeah. 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 
that's going to be the one I wrote down. Yeah. So what what is death for you? What is life for you? You are beyond life and death. You are everywhere present. There's nothing. So what you really are is not afraid of death. What you really are is not even is not even afraid of life. Or is beyond birth and death. It is already formless and empty. It's aliveness. Bubbling with life. All the appearances, they seem to have life because of this uh, boundless aliveness that is everywhere, presence. So that's what you really are. You're not the body. You are not even. There's just this. So what's talking right now is just everything. There isn't anybody who's talking. But there may be seem they may seem to be an imagination that arises in this and says, Oh, of course it's talking, but that's okay too, because it's still this expressing is that. So nothing is outside of this. So know this and become this. This just this. This just everything. Waiting, listening, is this, is this just everything listening, waiting, getting it or not getting it, it doesn't matter to this, because this just this. Man, you're beautiful. <laughs> okay, let me rephrase it. Man, this is beautiful. So there's no wrong or right here. There's no guilt here. So all, everywhere that is being spoken is just this. So there isn't anybody to own words. These words, they don't they are coming from somebody, even there. So they're not responsible for your words. Words are just arising from this, as this. There's nothing watching from behind those eyes. There's just nothing. I think you gotta go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just read the just read my thoughts. <laughs> yeah. uh, they call it uh, telepathic communication. 
Yeah, you read my thoughts sometimes too. I'll be thinking something and you'll respond to the question that I didn't say. It's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Okay, Nkosi. Say hi to your aunt. Thank you so much. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Good morning. Okay. <laughs> Good night.